I am from the Philippines. I am from Phoenix. Together, Together we're filled, filled to Phoenix. Phoenix. Two countries. One heart. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our travel, travel updates info. and video. <laughs> it's a travel info update. <laughs> so, so we just give you uh, an idea on how we were able to come over here in the Philippines, right, John? Kind of the highlights on what we experienced getting here. True. That as people know that we started this trip this process back in january but a lot of that's irrelevant as far as the process of getting here yeah so um we actually booked our ticket last may of 15 right john and then um what happened was we intended or we want a flight directly to cebu because with a lot of hassle and everything so we want wherever the origin in the state we want it directly to Cebu right John so and then <laughs> sad to say Paul just sent us notice twice right the first one was supposedly the original date was October 8th and um, they changed it because the flight they changed to Manila and we don't want it and so we actually asked, okay, what they do you have for um, a flight going straight to Cebu? And they said they have October 23rd. 24th. 24th. And we knew that when, be the day before my birthday, or remember, remember that Yeah, day? it was. So during my birthday trip, we kind of like thinking, what are the possibility or find a ways on either we call Paul and ask if, we need to find another date, right? I, I'm at the end of August, beginning of September. Yeah. That they changed the flight back to Manila again. Yeah, and, and we don't want, our goal is to go straight to Cebu because we just don't know. We don't want to go through another hassle of that. We don't want to know. We don't want to do if we will have another quarantine like we will have a quarantine from manila and then another quarantine here in cebu right right so what we did we call pal and since they don't have to to make the story short <laughs> we asked them if they had any international flights going directly into cebu yeah and they took about 10 minutes and came back and said no that no. They, everything they've got internationally goes through manila yeah so you start looking for um, an airline that would go straight here in Cebu. Correct. Cebu, right? And and so we took Eva Air, EVA Air. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's Eva Air or just EVA Air, but it's yeah the airline out of Taiwan. That's true. So we booked that ticket, and then we make sure to gather all the documents needed to. So here are the steps, <laughs> steps by steps in travel, in traveling here in the Philippines. So we flew back here in the Philippines last October, right? So you must be, so who can travel to the Philippines? Do you know who can travel to the Philippines? Me. <laughs> so like John, John had a 13A visa. It's right. a permanent resident Philippine. It's like a, in the US, it's equivalent to a green card visa so john has a 30a visa a filipino a feel a, a filipino or a dual citizen and then spouse cannot they need to to spouse get spouse can travel if they have a pre-approved visa. visa so there is a website there that uh, we could also uh, uh, put a link or i will also write down this steps by steps in our uh, fields to phoenix.com web website attached to this YouTube channel mm -hmm. uh, below the description so we you could see you know the steps by steps correct correct and then um, they have so th but one thing that we learned too is you always need to contact Paul can always give you this, but if you took a different airlines, you need to contact your airlines because rules can change quickly. Like And they are changing. Every single day. Correct, John? Some of them are getting more lax, some of them are getting stricter, so 
Yeah, so step number two, are there needed pre-departure preparation? We did, we, we created two packets, one for her, one for me. Yeah. That it had identical information. It had um, a photocopy of my passport, my True. ACR card, the visa stamp in my passport, uh, my Arizona driver's license. Yeah. Uh, our quarantine hotel booking reservation. Yeah, so we need uh, all of our ticket information for uh, both Alaska and Eva. Yeah. And, and that that way, I had a copy with me. She had a copy with her uh, of all of both of our documents. So that that way, and there was a couple times that they were needed. That's that's true. And that way that they, we, we were able to just pick them out and hand them to them. Yeah, it's easy to have all those informations compared to you just go and check in. So the third step is check in. So once you have those document documents needed, it's easy because John has a third and A visa. I am a dual citizen. I get my Filipino uh, pass, a Filipino, you know, getting back my Filipino citizenship. Now, the one thing that we did do we contacted Eva, but they, they weren't clear. They, they seemed a little confused. Yeah. And, and so one of the documents that we, we put in there is we emailed the Philippine Embassy in, in Washington, D.C., yeah. described the situation, let them know that, we, that I had a 13A visa, that uh, she had a dual citizenship, yeah. and, and, and asked one of the ambassador staff. And yeah. And they sent back an email, and so we printed out that email uh, of them saying that, yes, you were allowed to enter. Uh, the Philippines with that documentation so we had that directly from the Philippines Embassy as well with us that's true so and I believe Eva at, at uh, Seattle asked about that yes they do and so uh, going back to John's uh, John told about the quarantine hotel so make sure before you fly here in the Philippines you need to check the accredited quarantine hospital uh, no, call hotels because you need to wait at least you need to stay in a hotel at least two days but right now it's actually less than 24 hours right you still have to have it booked for two days because the test can take up to two so, days yeah that's true so and then aside from that is uh we make sure to get um our shuttle from the hotel so because the hotel has to provide the shuttle yeah yeah that's true and then the other thing is the QR code something. That there, uh, so we now, did the check-in. this is information going into Cebu Airport. Yeah, only. Manila Airport is a slight, it's similar but slightly different. Yeah. Uh, because they have a lot of terminals to go through here in Cebu. We only have one terminal, so that's the difference. In in Manila, they have okay, you go Bay Twelve, you go so and so forth, but this is just based on our experience. Correct. And the second terminal that that uh, Cebu has, yeah. Terminal Two. Yeah. Uh, this the internet, the big new international terminal has been shut down. Yeah. Uh, but there's just not enough air traffic air coming travel. in. Yeah. So everything's going back to Terminal One. So. Yeah. So one thing we did prepare to, aside from QR code, is we did have a face shield too. Because, uh, okay, though our airlines did not require to use face shield in the... And during the flights. During the flights, but when we arrived in Cebu immediately, so they asked you need to have a face shield, right? Yeah. And of so, course they had it for sale. Yes. <laughs> That's actually it. And then when we arrive in Cebu, we actually need to provide, of course, the, the documents needed, the uh, health screening form, the health declaration card, the arrival card, the fo custom form, and then the um, AITF declaration form, something like that. There's just two or three. ITF, yeah. yeah, so good for us because we have someone you know, <laughs> the, accompany uh, us, yeah. Because I got back issues that I'll normally fly uh, as an assistance needed so that yeah. that way I'm not having to run through airports. Yeah. Uh, and so there was a guy that met us at the gate. Uh, I, that I, I, I was cool about it. I walked up to the, the, the ramp for him. He got, a, got on level ground. Yeah. And he took over from that point. And he knew his way around really well. 
So a lot of what we went through kind of got expedited for us because of that. Yeah, because he just gave me, okay, sign this form, fill up this form. More, most of the forms that when we arrived in Cebu, like I fill up, I remember three other forms and yeah. he just gave it to me and I came, mom, just do this and do this and it's a lot easier. But as I, I remember the forms, I could just write it down in my article, in our article. And then uh, after filling up the form, we go through um, immigration, immigration first. Well, immigration. Yeah, we went through immigration. Immigration, first. and then we go first too because we have a quick, you know. Yeah. So, and then after immigration, we go down and pay four thousand nine hundred pesos for oh, swab. 4, no, four thousand nine hundred pesos for swab test. Cause I give a card. Okay. 4,900 pesos for what in Manila that? I know it's 4,000 pesos because I have a friend there came from LA that he that she gave for that she paid 400 uh, 4,000 I said what 900 4,900 in Cebu and 4,000 okay anyways it's I, I it doesn't matter so I just want to tell you that the price in Manila is different, and here in Cebu, it's different. Now, the at least in Cebu, uh, when we came in in October, they would take credit cards, and we put them both. We put both, both us on one credit. credit card. Yeah, I, I know too. In Manila, they have some credit cards now. So you know that made it a little bit easier, and that way, you're not having to have you know, eight, ten thousand pesos in cash. Yeah. So this is just a non OFW returning to the Philippines okay for people that are watching us who are OFW there is a website that you need to follow they have a different line when you arrive in the airport you have a different line to go through so non OFW have a different line OFW have a different line. and I believe their PCR test is free yes that's true because they need to ask hey mom sir are you an OFW because they are free yeah, because you got asked if you were an OFW a couple times. Yes, the OFW, the government also pays their accredited hotels for OFW. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, you too. I did my research. Very cool. So the last thing is after the you, you you've done your um, <laughs> swab test. It's actually two nose yeah. reels in your mouth, and it's really uncomfortable experience but it's okay yeah it and I, i've heard other people talk about how painful it was it wasn't painful but it was horribly uncomfortable and, and it, it definitely wasn't something that i'd want to do regularly but it's not something I, I would shy away from either but yeah so after that is baggage claim so all the luggages are already put in the uh, in the side. Right? Yeah, by the time you get your bags, you the, they've already been through customs. Yeah, they're already put in in line, and you just need to grab it. And then you need to make sure you need to make sure to wait. And then because the customs or whoever in there, they will just call your your um your hotel sh shuttle driver. So right. They, you don't the you don't leave the airport the. And Airport shuttle or, or the uh, hotel shuttle need to pick up. Needs to pick you up, and, and the representative needs to be in there meeting be you. Yeah, because there's a lot of police or guards or something in there that they ask, okay, what what hotel are you? Which hotel are you going? Yeah, you're to? not sneaking out of the airport. That's so for they're sure. basically really strict about it because I see like four or five, six, more than ten, you know, guards or police. In yeah, there. they're they're definitely watching and. and I guess at one point they did have a problem with people sneaking out yeah. and we're not happy about it. So Yeah, so we got that taken care of our transportation. We go straight to the hotel. When we arrive in the hotel, the hotel our receptionist or people advise us, okay, since you're still in a part uh since you're still waiting for your um result, you need to stay in the hotel. <laughs> you're not allowed to go out and so and so forth. We were supposed to stay in our room. Yeah. Now, the, the shuttle driver was really cool. Uh, he didn't let us out, but he stopped at 7-Eleven for us, and he yeah. picked up a couple things that we gave him some. We did have some peso cash with us at, the, yeah. at that point. And, yeah, he went into 7-Eleven, and he picked up a few things for us. Yeah. Picked up a couple of San Miguel's for me. Uh, Three-in-ones for you, too. Yeah, I got some three-in-ones. Skyflex for me. Of course, Skyflex. I love Skyflex. So that's actually it. So, um... Now at the hotel, the hotel got copies. That the hotel gets an email with your results as well. No, they don't. We gave them. We provided them. 
remember. Okay. So I forward. When I originally did the research back in, in uh, September, the, the, the uh, they stopped doing it. The Bureau of Quarantine or whomever emailed the hotel as well. They stopped doing it. The, okay. The results go straight to the person, and we just need to forward it to the to the okay. receptionist. That's what I did. And this is what I mean by by this is what we were talking about. The procedures change quickly, rapidly, rapidly and, and not necessarily well publicized. <laughs> I know it is, and then. Our meals was just uh, provided. They put our meals, you know, there is a chair in there and they put our meals. Yeah, it was just a small plastic chair out in the uh, hallway. Awesome. Hallway. That they'd knock on the door and, and let you know your meal was there and that they would leave and then you'd go out and get your meal. Yeah. Uh, you had your pick of pretty much uh, whatever was on the, the room service menu to, to get. The, the food was okay. So basically, after that, and then um, eight o'clock in the morning, on Saturday, we we receive an email about our negative results. Yeah, it was about eighteen twenty hours later. Yeah. And the airport's the yeah the airport the hotel staff was saying that if you get an afternoon flight, typically first thing in the morning, in the morning. You'll, you'll have your results back. Yeah. So overall, that was actually it. That's the their procedure. We just waited or we just stayed extra couple day in the hotel because we have some errands to take care of but overall the, that was the biggest takeaway on this is that foreigners whether you're coming in with your spouse or not you have to have a pre-approved visa in place yeah before you board that plane yeah because some people in paul website before they said as long as you are with a spouse you could you know you just need to show your marriage certificate so i i didn't know about that but you just need to contact your airline and make sure you have the documents needed because you don't know when, when we were when we were in seattle there were three or four people or five really people decline. that they wouldn't allow board because they didn't have visas in place they didn't for, for whatever reason that the uh yeah visa not in place was the the biggest one uh, so one with the child with the mother is a Filipino, but the child is an American citizen and don't have, you know, a Filipino passport, and that's what also that's the problem. They just flew from New uh, Orleans to to Seattle. Yeah, and that, that's part of the problem is some of these airlines because they code share that we flew Alaska from Phoenix to Seattle. Alaska really didn't ask anything, any information about what we needed or anything. And so there were a few people that flew flew in from other areas and got denied in, in Seattle. So yeah. they're, they're, now they're stranded in Seattle. Yeah. We just had a friend of ours. that They came from Midwest somewhere to L.A. and had the same exact thing happen. That, that they were stuck in L.A. And the husband didn't have a pre-approved visa, and and uh, whatever airline they were flying wouldn't let him board. Yeah. So yeah, just make sure to have all the documents needed. Make sure to uh, contact your airline. Uh, contact, you know, the Philippine consulate to make sure you have all the documents needed. So we hope this is helpful to you, and. That's actually it. So please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you so much. Mabuhay! Mabuhay.